With the championship title looking like it could be on the cards, and in fact, I don't want to say it too soon, could be a guarantee. Today we're back with FA Cup action. Brighton and Hove Albion await us. The last time we lost a game was to Wrexham. The Wrexham team we lost to was managed by Matt Crooks. This man is Brighton manager. His attributes are absolutely insane. The bloke is 38 years old. He's had this crazy rise as a football manager. Um, yeah, ever since he was released by Middlesbrough as a player. And to be fair, he's kind of earned this chance at Brighton. I just have to hope we can beat them today. And the plan if we do beat them today is to play the FA Cup quarterfinal. I think it would be the quarterfinal if we were to win it. If we don't win that, I think the plan is to just try and win the league today. That might not be that far away either. We are currently 15 points clear at the top of the table. There are 10 games left of the year. And in fact, I think if we win and Sunderland lose in their next league game, there's even a chance we guarantee promotion in the next week. Alongside all of that, we have also got a youth intake to cover today. So let's run the intro, get right into things. I'm bloody excited. Yes, folks, how is it going? Welcome back to Park to Prem. If you missed yesterday's video, it was a deadline day video. We spent £28 million on a centre mid. I'm training to play right back. And, well, <laughs> I was going to say, that doesn't sound believable. No, if you watch my series, that definitely is a thing I would do. Michael Bolton is looking like a very, very good player. Hasn't had the craziest of starts in at right back just yet, but at 23 years old, considering he is playing a position that he has very little knowledge in. I mean, he's competent in it, to be fair. A 7.02 rating doesn't seem awful. Of course, he is a player we have signed very much with the intent of using him in the Premier League, and when you look at our recent form, it does feel like now we are Premier League bound. Last episode wasn't that long ago. Of course, we beat Bournemouth 3-0 in that game. Since then, it's not been plain sailing necessarily, but we've got three wins on the bounce. The first of those games came against Cardiff City. Uh, it wasn't exactly the most classic of performances, but a 2-1 win nevertheless. Suleimane Kamara with the all-important goal in this one. The 19-year-old, unhappy that I'm not using him more. He has featured in 24 games this year, 14 as a starter. Maybe I'm biting myself in the buttocks by promising him a regular starter football. Can we lower his playing time? I'm going to try and convince him that impact sub is where he should be, and, well, he's agreed to it. The question is, why have I not done that sooner? I can't stress this enough. If you have players who are unhappy with their playing time, try changing their playing status, especially as you climb up through the league. Worst case scenario, they get a minor hit on their morale. Best case, what we're seeing here. A player who I do want to feature in the team, but not as a regular starter. Hopefully now, is going to be happier. We can hope. Anyway, in the next game, we beat Ipswich Town 3-1. This was a good result, especially because we lost against Ipswich 3-1 earlier on in the year at home. In terms of performances in this game, Ngoma, man of the match, two assists and a goal for him, was a very, very rotated team in this game, you can see. Uh, an unlikely set of players on the pitch for this one. Did have a little late scare when they scored in the 73rd minute, but we controlled this game. And a game that we did anything but control was this one against Middlesbrough. We were 2-0 down at halftime. I was fuming. Yes, I did rotate the team. Team. Yes, Lamine Endor did score his first ever goal for the club on his debut in this game too. But truth be told, this was not the most convincing of performances. Isaac Pritchard, by the way, playing for Middlesbrough. Of course, we've sold them a number of players over the year. Uh, that goal there by Dunn was a bloody good goal. They doubled their lead right before halftime from a corner. I got shouty shouty. Um, you, know, you know the game plan. You, you throw a water bottle, you get mean, you get angry. We came out in the second half with a bee in our bonnet. And I'll tell you what, the fans behind the goal got to see this absolute banger. Zitto to the edge of the box for Indoor for that first ever goal at the club. Neil A then involved in the build-up players. Lee Min sliding in at left back, of course, in on loan from Tottenham. Put a deflected cross on the plate of Gomez, the young Brazilian we've signed. The new, well, I was going to say the new Bolivian beast. The Brazilian beast. It works flawlessly. Yeah, okay, I'll admit it. That third goal there was fortunate. But a win is a win. So three wins in a row does put us in this really, really good position. You can see here as well. Average ratings in the league. We are absolutely dominant in this. We have had such a great team performance from a whole host of players. Endai leading the way. Sam Fay continuing to develop. I feel like this guy might be my player of the year. He is, I believe, our top goal scorer. 24 goals in all competitions. 12 assists as well. I feel like he just plays way better than his attributes in the match engine. He's definitely not our best player on paper. But in terms of raw performance, when you look at his goals, you look at his assists, don't think anyone comes close. Except maybe Roger Rojas. He probably wouldn't be happy hearing that sentence. 
Anyway, besides those three games, not a whole lot else going on right now. We're really just waiting for the youth intake and hoping we can go on an FA Cup run. If we want to make it happen, we've got to win here. It's going to be a difficult game, but we're at home. We're at Butlin Road. Brighton right now, ninth in the Premier League. Not going to be pushovers. But neither are we. Now, in terms of team news, end of last episode, we had everyone available. And fantastic news, everyone is available yet again here. We have really been heavily rotating the team this year. I suppose that's indicated by the fact you've got players like Bellardo, Kamara, uh, Niele as well, who have all started double-figure games. Given the fact this is an FA Cup game, only seven players available on the bench. But in terms of the starting eleven, it is at full strength. Let's try and cause an upset, shall we? Anyway, we are the home team for this game. Ospina, Rojas and Goma Fay in the final third. I'm hoping they're going to make magic happen as they have throughout this year. Given the fact promotion is pretty much all but assured at this point, I do feel like this game presents itself with a nice opportunity to see how do we fare against a Premier League team, a mid-table Premier League team as well in Brighton. They are a really good little team. When I look at our players on paper, I actually feel like we're the kind of team that should be able to stay up in the Premier League. A young squad that is only getting better and better. Somewhat excited to see what investment we can bring to the team in the summer. But what we've got right now, I think, is a team that could reasonably win a game like this one. Rojas is played in behind and Roger Rojas has scored and Gomez assisted. We're ahead inside five minutes. If this was going to be a test, we've just had the, the football manager equivalent of when you open up a paper before an exam in school and then you see the first question and all your nerves just calm down. You know the answers, you know what needs to be done. This is as good as it could have gone to in the first five. Although that could change quickly. They've got a set piece, back post headed across goal. It hits the woodwork, Jen and that gets away. That was a very, very quick highlight. It's over in a flash. We are still ahead. Statistically, in this game, we're edging out possession, or we were, now they've got possession back ahead. They're yet to create anything bright, and that cross that hit the crossbar, the only highlight they've had, and well, we could have a chance here. Zhao Victor towards Ospina. It is headed away, but only as far as Jerdanak. I feel like one thing I've not really mentioned is how good our team is in the air. Between Bolton, Jerdanak, Gasperi, and NDIA, we've got, I think, three players with 17 jumping reach, and then I think Jerdanak has 15 jumping reach. Aerially, we are superb. Get the ball on the deck, though, and we can make magic happen as well. We are 2-0 up in this game. Could we have an FA Cup quarter-final coming up after this? That would be fun. NDIA making his way down the left-hand side. My assistant is telling me Bolton's been played out of position. Just going to ignore that. Zhao Victor, lovely little assist. Ospina did well to turn there inside the 18-yard box and get a shot away. Jung Darling goal had no chance. I have noticed looking through their team. They are playing a rotated team today, Brighton. I'm just looking at the players. They're playing it. Okay, they, uh, let's not get too carried away. Members of their back four aren't really changed, but all their good attacking players not playing today. Here I am singing the praises of us, saying, yeah, we're beating this Premier League team. We're beating their reserves. But you know what? You can only beat the team that's put in front of you. Let's try and beat them some more. Ospina whipping it in. Bolton is there. That is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to aerial ability. Bolton, he might be a right back for us. The man's got 17 jumping reach. Endai also has 17 jumping reach as well. We've got so many big meaty men to aim for in the middle. And Bolton leaps the highest of all the meat. There's some sentences I construct and I think to myself, that sounds mental. That sentence there is definitely one of them. We are free and up in this game. Brighton's reserve team are not enjoying things here. I guess the manager choosing to focus on the league and try to get European football that way. We have been so good in this game so far. And while Kimski, first time he touched the ball all game, nice, comfortable save. That first half has absolutely flown by. Three goals up. Brighton with just one shot. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say anything too prematurely. I think we're into the next round. I'm not going to rotate the team just yet, but the fixtures are piling up a little bit. And whilst I can use the league to rotate things, I wouldn't mind resting a player or two here. We're whipping it towards Bolton. It's cleared away, but N'Goma gets a chance to put it towards Gasperi. Jerdanak, the centre-back. What can he do? He tries to lay it towards NDIA, who doesn't get there at the first time of asking, but he has the pace and the physicals to just chase after the ball like a terrier loose in the park. Jao Victor almost loses the ball. Riviere, though, there to mop up the pieces. Brighton are really trying to press us here if we can play our way through it we could find ourselves in behind that pass there lacking but pressure applied and a turnover forced yet again right now 
Brighton with just no time to breathe on the ball. Kinski's going to launch it forward. Rojas has picked up a knock. Probably going to take him off just to play things safe. Ball played into no man's land. NDIA picks up. We've got players surging forward here. If we pick out the right passes, we could find ourselves in behind. Ospina has one already. Could he double his lead uh, or double his tally? He has doubled his tally. It's four. Okay, I'm going to make changes here. Neil A can come on. Kamara, come on for Sanfe as well. Let's rest all the big guns. Zhao Victor off for Miyazawa. And you know what? Lee Min for NDIA. Oh, wait, we only get three subs in the FA Cup. Don't care if we've only played 51 minutes. I think we could afford to play a man down at this point if we were to get an injury. Uh, worth noting, when it comes to the FA Cup rules, they are set as part of the database that I use. I think they have been fixed in the final version of the database. If I'm not mistaken, we should have more subs and more players on the bench. But th this is how it is for every team in this save game. We have to deal with it. Kamara to Niele. Brighton starting to commit men forward, maybe leaving themselves open at the back. There's still 30 minutes left. This game could get embarrassing. It could have been a hat-trick for Ospina. The flag's raised. It's offside. I mean, I don't want to kind of think about this too much, but if we make it to the FA Cup quarter-final, do I have to start dreaming about winning the FA Cup as a championship side? Like, uh, imagine if we got European football next year. I'm definitely getting carried away. There are three minutes left of this game. Brighton not really mustering up anything. There's been no fight back in this second half. There's been no signs of life. They have been on the table without a pulse for a while, it feels like. It's just a case of how long is this post-mortem going to last? Could we inflict a little bit more damage in Goma, the number 10, into the wide area? NDIA, four players in the middle team for Ngoma, Ospina. That was the chance, the hat-trick. It's, well, scary skewed wide. Ospina really could have and maybe should have had a hat-trick there. Sadly, he could only get two, but still, man of the match for him, two goals and an assist. The Colombian improving a lot lately, which we love to see. A man who's been a little bit hit and miss, a little bit inconsistent, was missing for an extended period during the winter. Forgot to mention it really last episode. In January, we had a few of our South American players just on international duty, which was annoying. But he has come back in that game and done the business, as has the rest of our team, and we've booked ourselves a, a place in the next round of the FA Cup, which is always fun. Uh, elsewhere, Peterborough also still in it. Blackburn nearly caused an upset against Manchester United as well. Roger Rojas is out for six to seven days. I think we can manage that. Neil lay out for three weeks. So uh, we are losing a few strikers there. Going to give off Spina some praise for that performance in that game. That was absolutely sensational. And now, well, we're into the next round of the FA Cup, which looking at things, we won't actually know who we're playing for a little while. I say, say a little while. When is the next round? Quarter final, start date 13th of March, end date 13th of March. Know when we're going to be back. Now, we've only actually got two league games between now and the next FA Cup round. With that in mind, I'm going to go play Southampton, go play Coventry. We're going to come back for that quarterfinal tie. Oh, I'd love to go on a cup run. I sometimes avoid doing the cup draws because they can drag on a little bit, but the FA Cup draws just rolled up and I thought, you know what, let's just do it in the episode. There's only nine names to come out of the hat. Uh, Liverpool and Chelsea still to play one another. Uh, I'll be real with you. There's a lot of championship teams still in this competition this year. Anyway, we'll turn on automatic draw and now we just eagerly await our name to come out of the hat. Leeds United are going to play Coventry. Who's up next? Luton Town. Wouldn't mind Luton away from home. That'd be fun. We're not going to play Manchester United. We are going to be at home. And we're going to be at home against Tottenham. Oh, that, that's, I mean, that is unfortunate, isn't it? We could have had League One Peterborough. That would have been really, really convenient. Tottenham. Are Tottenham good in this universe? I mean, they're currently in 10th, aren't they? They've got Nagelsmann as their manager. Ironically, I've got Lee Min, I realise, on loan from them. I have no idea if he's allowed to play against them or not. Can he play against his club? I think he can play against them. I assume that because we signed him as a championship club, they didn't think this situation would happen. It'd be quite fun if he had a good game against them, wouldn't it? I mean, Tottenham at home. Tottenham, you know, that's okay. I say that's okay. There were four Premier League teams in the draw that we could have played and three non-Premier League teams we could have played. So it could have been better. But I digress. I feel like it could be winnable. Maybe. Anyway, I've got Southampton and Coventry to play. We may be coming back in a moment as a promoted team. It's almost certainly done. It's just a case of if, not when, could we get it done by the Tottenham game? Uh, you'll find out in the next one, two, three... Okay, both league games played. The win against Southampton was nice. 2-1 there. This game here against Coventry, though, the all-important one. Sam Fay, man of the match. Two goals for the great Scots in this game. This game, though, more significant because 
it confirms our promotion. Yes, we are in the Premier League for next year, and I've come back immediately because I've seen the inbox item, board set an initial budget. So let's be honest, this is the most exciting inbox item you get upon promotion. How much are we going to be given to spend? The answer is a transfer budget of £26 million, the wage budget shooting up to £525,000. That's a lot of money. In fact, for context, you can see here we're currently spending half that on wages. Of course, with a few of the new players whose contracts we've renewed, they are going to get 50% promotional wage rises. So this wage budget might vanish a little bit rather quickly as the summer goes on. But make no mistake, we're in a really good position to strengthen the team in the summer now. The fans are loving it. I'm loving it. And to make things even better, Isaac Warren is now playing for Torquay. He's just kept a clean sheet for them. Three clean sheets in six games in League Two. Finally, he's getting the football he needs to maybe fulfill that potential to be a championship standard goalkeeper. Yeah, okay, look, we all wish he had slightly higher potential. Maybe he can get even better. Sam Fay, you can have some praise, my friends. And if we just look at the title, you can see here there is, what, eight games left of the season, 24 points on offer. We are 18 points clear of Luton. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it now, and I don't think it's premature we are going to win the league. And also, with eight games left, we've already broken the record for most goals scored in a championship season. 129 goals scored in 38 games is just... I mean, that's ridiculous. That is over three goals a game. And in fact, if we just look at the XG table, you can see here. Uh, yeah, we are overperforming our XG quite a lot. But make no mistake, we should be scoring a lot. We create a lot. We definitely deserve to be top. Anyway, with that all said and done, we have got our youth intake going on this month. We should cover that, should it happen um, <laughs> this month, which it will happen, so we will be covering it. But of course, that's not why we're back right now. We are back right now because we still have Tottenham to play. That game is a week away. I'm going to rest up the players, hope that we're ready and raring to go for that one. Don't go anywhere. Let's try and keep the FA Cup dream alive. I feel like today's episode has been a little bit of a whirlwind. That is not going to stop right now. We are taking on Tottenham. We still have our youth intake to follow this. Uh, I was hoping it would come before this game. It hasn't. Tottenham are currently ninth in the Premier League. I am secretly hoping they are going to rotate their team. They did play a game midweek, so their first team is looking a little on the tired side. You know, if they don't want to play the likes of Van der Ven, Pedro Porro, Wilfried Nonto up top for them as well, um, that would be nice. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm saying this like they're going to listen to me. Also, they've got a guy called Nicholas Flamengo here, who apparently I've scouted at some point. He's bloody good, isn't he? How much did they pay for? 3.5 million for him. 3.5. I can only assume my scouts found him during one of our assignments and then he wasn't interested in joining me. So he like never came up because obviously we we do scout a lot of young players around the world of football. Um, Probably should be looking at some of these in some more detail, shouldn't I? Can you tell I'm aware of the fact I've got like a transfer budget and wage budget to spend now? I'm already thinking ahead to the summer, but really we should focus on the here and now. We are three games away from European football and in all my years playing Football Manager on YouTube as a championship team, team. I've never won the FA Cup and I say that like it's a normal thing to happen. Obviously teams in real life have been relegated from the Premier League and won the FA Cup. I've seen it in save games I've played where the AI is able to win the league and uh, well the FA Cup as a championship team. I would love to repeat that here. This game here is not going to be easy. One thing that might make it slightly easier, though, is the fact that we have got a near enough full strength team that has had plenty of time to rest ahead of this one. Uh, worth noting, Lee Min does indeed have a clause, which means he can't play against his parent club. Uh, apparently, I can't read small print. Uh, I, I will say now, people underestimate the difficulty of being able to talk free flowingly and also read stuff in Football Manager. It's bloody hard. The only other player who is unavailable who probably would have made the bench is Raul Ballardo. Sadly, he picked up a semi serious injury, fractured ribs out for a couple of weeks with that so he's not available he may well have been on the bench but of course with only seven players on the bench in this FA Cup and given the fact that full strength first team exists I feel suitably prepared for this one if you are wondering Jack what happens if you just lose this game like what do we do for the end of season a fantastic question I've not really thought about it it might be the next episode we kind of do just a big end of season wrap up maybe I recap the squad as a whole kind of go through the save game so far and look at some of the more historical bits of course the dream scenario is we're back tomorrow for an FA Cup semi-final 
and maybe a final? I mean, either of those games would be at Wembley. That would be nice. And we are at home for this game, which is definitely an advantage I would love to press home. We got an early goal last game. I have noticed they've got Pedro Porro at right back. So if I was hoping they were going to rotate their team... Doesn't seem like that's been the case. Then we are going to have to play well here. Bolton at right back, making his way forward. Options inside. Rojas is one of them. We scored inside three minutes last game. We've scored within two minutes this game. It's Bolton with the assist. Rojas with the goal. Oh my. I clearly want to click through their players. Are they playing a full strength team? I think they are actually playing all their first team players that we looked at and saw were tired. I mean, that could be chaotic in the later stages of this game. I'm now really curious on the kind of the between highlights bit just to look at their team's fitness levels. Yeah, there are some of their better players struggling a little bit. That's that's interesting. Of course, it's interesting. <laughs> they're still going to be bloody good, even when they're tired. And in fact, they've got a chance here, maybe. Pedro Porro, short corner, making his way to the edge of the box. Could pull the trigger. Does pull the trigger. I think Kinski tipped that wide. They've already gone for one short corner routine. They're going for another one here. N'Goma's kind of half read it. Uh, oh, also, speaking of N'Goma, have actually just offered him a new contract on £38,000. You know, I feel like now we're in the Premier League, he deserves to be paid the money that I can actually afford to pay him. Even though I think it's a massive overpay, I feel like now he's earned it. And I'm going to hope that before the new contract kicks in with a load of bonuses, he puts in a good performance here. Ospina, N'Goma's in the middle. Speaking of the devil, back post Faye with an awful header. I mean, he's not known for his aerial ability. That's why. Tottenham's players are definitely more tired than ours. They're going for this short corner routine again. Uh, I, don't, I feel like they should be changing something to deal with this. They've gone for three short corners that we've witnessed so far inside 15 minutes. And, well, but for another Kinski save, they could have scored right there. Given all the short corners they're taking, I'm wondering, is there a way I can actually tell someone to deal with the sh short corner? Like, can I change B2, which I assume is N'Goma in this situation? Is there a way that we can get him to do a thing? Is it N'Goma, B B2, N'Goma, where are you? Yeah, okay, he is B2. He was the man going short. I don't think there's actually a way, like, to tell a player to cover off the short corner option. That should really be a thing, SI. Can you tell I'm taking things seriously in this game, trying to do everything in my power to win? We're in a situation here where I'm actually trying to counterplay their set pieces. This, this is ne next degree try-hardedness. Tottenham with the ball deep in their own ho half here. Quiroga kind of trying to play out from the back. NDIA reads it. The left back coming forward and blazing it just wide of the post. We are looking really bloody good in this game. We're only a goal up. They're having a lot more of the ball. Little concern that Tottenham had that kind of corner or two or three or four. They've had four corners. They, that's been where they've been most dangerous potentially. But in general, we've controlled the game thus far. But with a one goal lead, with the quality they've got, it could vanish quickly. I think the keepers just made another save there, by the way. Okay, they've gone for the short corner. Gasperi now is going short for this corner. Why is Gasperi the man going short this time? I, I don't understand football manager tactics. If someone does understand them, please let me know. Also, why, why are we just having highlight after highlight here? Alfie Devine to Pedro Porro. Devine, impressed by the number of players that Tottenham have from the beginning of the save game. Not impressed by our defending there. That shot whistles over. Half time in this game, a goal up. I want to praise the players, but that would invite incomplacency. I'm just going to tell them I'm not happy. Michael Bolton is confused and demotivated. I'm going to tell him I'm very happy with his performance. Now he's just confused. Hopefully he doesn't hurt himself in confusion. Right, 45 minutes played. We're a goal up. We've caused some FA Cup upsets over the years. Let's not forget, we've beaten Premier League teams as kind of a, a lower league team. We are now a big team with some real quality. And right now, we are taking this game to Tottenham. I would love us to get that second goal just to give us the breathing room. Maybe something can happen here because we're having the ball around the back. Gasperi has NDIA to go to down the line. Jao Victor inside. Tottenham don't look too keen to press, but if we can control up the ball like this and force them to chase things, we could really run them down into the ground. Grasperi plays it wide to NDAA. He dinks it towards N'Goma. It's dealt with well by the Tottenham defence and Nonto, the lone striker. He is very, very pacey. And whilst he is tired, don't really want to see him running in behind. What we want to see is Ospina in behind. He's through. It falls to N'Goma. He finds the back of the net. It's going to count. It's 2-0. The fans, the, I want to say they're going mental. They're just kind of doing this. Football, football manager crowds. Uh, look, there's a new match engine next year, isn't there, with the move to Unity? Maybe we'll get slightly better scenes in the crowd. Imagine if this goal went in in real life. The crowd would, would be going mental. It just looks like they're doing the YMCA to celebrate. Let's be honest here. What a goal that is, though. I'm really 
taken away from the moment, haven't I? We're two goals up. Tottenham are making some changes. They've got a set piece here. It's right down the middle. They go short to Davin. He could pull the trigger. It goes through Kinski's hands. And that lead, it lasted less than 10 minutes. Pedro Porro playing this ball, just driven low. Davin, a little bit of time and space. P picked out a shot. I can't get my words out. The occasion's getting to me. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just a good finish. Could the keeper have done better? Was it offside? I don't think the line was drawn in the right place. The game's rigged. Okay, Jernanak is not having a good game. He's also on a booking. I'm going to bring in Marino to replace him. Elsewhere in the team, Fabian has not had the greatest of games as a deep line playmaker today. I'm going to make a change. It is a conservative one. I am bringing in Mia Zawa to play alongside Jao Victor as just a ball-winning midfielder. This guy can definitely play as a ball-winning midfielder. Order. And I feel like alongside Jal Victor, uh, that could maybe just help our defence a little bit defensively. There's a temptation to tell the wing backs to go on to support, but I just feel like that compromises how we play so much. We are a team that play much better when we're on the front foot trying to take the kind of game to the opposition. Don't think I need to overreact based on one set piece goal too much. Anyway, Tottenham looking to make things happen. Of course, if it finishes 2 2, this will go to a replay. We will do that next episode. I think. I, I think that's the plan. I've, I make it sound like I have a plan. Uh, Fiamengo here for them in the wide area. Let's be positive. It's not going to go to a replay. We're going to hold on in this game. Everything is going to be absolutely fine. And Goma, please just clear it. Thank you very much. Roe has to run onto it. Van der Ven wins it initially. Faye can't win the next second ball, but Mia Zawa absolutely can. Bolton already has one assist to his name, the right back. Look how big he is in the match engine. He plays it to Rojas. Players queuing up at the back post and Goma has scored another. Roger Rojas, what an assist. I don't want to overreact. I don't, I don't want to get carried away. Could, could we make it to the FA Cup semi-final here? This is absolutely sensational. Ball squared and Goma had the goal at his mercy. He has only four or five finishing. Did not fluff his lines. 3-1 up, 15 minutes left. I want to say I'm relaxing, but immediately there's a highlight starting with their goalkeeper with the ball. Locker holding it close to his chest, throwing it wide. Just as a reminder, FA Cup here, only three subs allowed. Their team was already a little bit tired as well. I'm going to hope they maybe run themselves into the ground. Sadly, I was going to say they're coming forward here, but that is wasteful. That is absolutely fine with me. Jao Victor, defensive mid, shoots from range. It was never going in, was it? I just want to pause things here. Look at our player fitness levels. Ours are not looking great. What I will say is they look a lot better than Tottenham's. Their defence is tired. They've changed everything in the final third. Feel like with tired defenders and the kind of players we have, that is going to leave them there for the counter-attack. Lotka, the goalkeeper, is going to go short. I mean, fair play to Tottenham. They're sticking to their guns of playing it out from the back. And to be fair, they've beaten our press with relative ease. Mohamed in a wide area, cutting inside, all on his lonesome. And I'll tell you what, Kinski's made another save there. He's on above a 7.0 rating, despite conceding a goal. That is a very good rating in Football Manager for a goalkeeper. And now I'm just looking in the top left. There's five minutes of added time. It's still 3-1. We are still winning here at home. And we are going to knock out Tottenham. Michael Bolton, the right back who can't play right back. Man of the match performance. Five key passes as well. What a game for him. Signed him to play that right back position long term. Discussed the possibility of him being a Champions League quality right back. I'll say now, I feel like he's proven there he's a Premier League quality right back at the very least. Sadly for us, Coventry and Peterborough, the other non-Premier League teams playing today, couldn't win. So uh, yeah, Leeds and Liverpool into the semi-final with us. Michael Bolton, I'm going to need you to hurry up. Roger that. Let's give him some praise. That was an awful reference, wasn't it? I feel like people write Michael Bolton kind of references in my comment section. I'm too young. I, don't, I was born in 93, folks. Like I, I, I don't know Michael Bolton that well. I know Lonely Island, you know, J Captain Jack Sparrow. But I feel like if I do those kind of references, people will get annoyed that I'm doing a disrespect to his musical career. Right, we have still got a youth intake to do today. I mean, it's been chaotic. And in fact, the youth intake has arrived here. What have we got? Uh, the the answer is one of the worst intakes in recent years. Below average, I absolutely agree. Also, transfer list notification, Remy Benyon. Can you remember this guy, Benyon? When we played Man City a year or two ago in the FA Cup, he popped up. He's transfer listed by request at £88 million. Apparently, he does actually want to join me. I'm not paying him £200,000 a week, and I'm not paying £88 million for him. He does look quite good, although I will say for Man City, his numbers aren't that impressive. Anyway, you think take care. Um... Do I even want to look through this? I just feel sad looking at it. 
Also, the fact that players have already been assigned faces mean they're reusing IDs. So the, the races on some of these players could be incorrect. Apparently, Jamie Tuffy is the pick of the bunch. 15 years old, Irish. This is the pick of the bunch. You know what? I don't even feel like it dignifies talking about, does it? Five-star youth recruitment, great youth facilities, and this is what I get. I mean, we have had it good for a little while, haven't we, over the last few years? This is the worst intake in years. Right, I'm going to hit continue just to see if the FA Cup draw happens. I know that the next round of the FA Cup isn't for, like, ages. I think it's, like, on the 17th of uh, April. Uh, looking at things here, Luton and United aren't playing for another 10 days. Are we really waiting for that? For the, for the next round. No. The answer's no. FA Cup draw. Who are we playing? What are we coming back for tomorrow? Let's find out. Automatic draws ticked. I want leads. I want leads. I've not got leads. I'm going to play either Luton or Manchester United. I hate it. Now, based on the fact the other semi-final is on the 17th of April, I believe ours will be on the 18th of April. So we've got a month until that next game that I'm going to come back for next episode. Between now and then, I'm hoping... We are going to win the championship. If we don't win the championship, something awful really has happened. Have to say, by the way, very cool that ourselves and Luton, the top two teams in the championship, are in the final five of the FA Cup. Shout out to Luton. They've done very well. I feel like 80 points is actually a mad total. We just make it look really average of our 95 points so far. A few episodes ago, I mentioned the idea of trying to make episodes slightly shorter. I have fell miserably with that this week. Maybe I can turn things around to end the week tomorrow. An FA Cup semi-final awaits. Maybe a final as well. We will certainly be ending the season to end the week. And I'll see you guys then. I'm out.